Brother Raymond, we do hope for you. Lord, we thank you for this day. We are so thankful for your mercy and your grace, Lord. You bestowed upon us that peace that passes all understanding, Lord. Yes. We're so thankful, Lord, that you came to seek and to save that which was lost. As we continue to pray for our lost loved ones, all that don't know you in that brief heart of sin today. You know our life is a vapor, it appears for a little while, then it's gone. Pray, Lord, you draw people and let them realize the condition of their soul before it's eternally too late. We look about in our nation and our communities. We see that if sin does abound, we're so thankful today that your grace does abound much more. And we face these trials and tribulations in this life, Lord. No, you told us you'd never leave us, forsake us, always make a way, receive us no way. Increase our faith, Lord, trust in you more. Pray for those who couldn't be here today. Remember our daughters on the road traveling. Give her traveling mercies today. Remember the sick today, those that are facing surgeries. Pray for you be in every part of it, working your surgeon's hands. Pray for those who has got cancer. We know that you're a great physician today, Lord. That you make a way for them. Help us yes. do your will. Pray for the service here today, Lord, and help us lay aside the cares life. We have this opportunity to come here and worship you in spirit and in truth. We need your help to do that. Bless Brother Brad as he preaches the precious word here today and opens awesome. it up and breaks the bread of life to us. Lord, we might receive what we need today. We want to pray and ask these things and give thanks in the precious name of our Lord and the Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. <laughs>
Verse 15 starts out says, Let the peace of God rule. Uh, the title of my message this morning is Let Go and Let God. Our problem is letting go. God wants to do something, doesn't he? Let go uh, and let God. Let the peace of God rule. You know, I want to tell you, praise God, there's a peace of God that's available to us. In the book of John, chapter uh, uh, 14, uh, verse 27, it says, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Yeah. That's a peace that comes from God. Amen. I like it where Jesus came in there after the resurrection. He came through those doors. The doors were locked. And he saw the disciples. They looked at how to get in here. You know what Jesus said the first thing? He said, peace be unto you. Yeah. Yeah. He knows what we need. In Romans chapter 5, verse 1, it says, Therefore, being justified. I like that, justified. You know, you're not justified by your works. It says, justified by faith. <coughs> we have peace. With God. You know what? We're to be peacemakers. You know what? Before you got saved, there was a there was a problem between you and God. But praise God, we've been justified, amen, through the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. It says in verse 2, by whom we also have access. Whew, aren't you glad we got access this morning? Amen. By faith into the grace where we stand and rejoice in the hope and the glory of God. We say it's here back in clock, let the peace of God rule. Yeah. There's a song that I do, but it's, it's, it's got the same words of one that's in our hymnal. Uh, constantly abiding. I don't know, we'll probably try singing that tonight. I don't know that song, but... Uh, I, I know a chorus I used to sing when we were a kid, and I, I showed Laura, I, she'd never heard it before, and it must have been back in this, the 70s, early 70s, and they had long hair, and it was a Christian group, and boy, they're singing, I mean, not long, but you know, the style back then, bell bottoms and all that, and uh, it goes, there's a peace in my heart, and the same words, there's a peace in my heart that the world never gave. Me. Anyone got that peace here this morning? Amen. It says a peace it cannot take away. Now, I'm not going to differ with that. You don't always have that peace like you should have, do you? There's another uh, uh, song. Now, you know this song. I'm pretty sure you do. It says, uh, I've got peace like a river. You ever heard that? Yeah. Right. I've got peace like a river. I've got peace like a river. I've got peace like a river where in my Oh. Hallelujah! Anybody Amen. got that? Amen. Yeah, but Brother Brad, sometimes that river gets overflowing. I don't know what river we're singing about, but I've got visualized just going down there, a clear stream going like this. But sometimes the rain comes, sometimes the storm comes. Next thing you know, it's a raging, it's looking kind of muddy. Sometimes I, there's a tree going down it, there's that there. It don't sound so peaceful, does it, at times? But I want you to know there's a peace of God that can handle it all. Amen. Sometimes we find that's not what's ruling in us is the peace of God. I just quickly, I thought, sometimes you know what's ruling in you? Worry. Yeah. You're worried. That's not God's desire. To let not your heart be troubled. He said, I have my peace. I gave you peace. When you got saved, the power, the mighty God came into your life, and along with that came peace. Amen. Yeah. But I know what we let rule many times. We let worry rule. That word let is that's something you've got to do, and that's why I said you've got to let go and let God. Yeah. Amen. Whatever worry you got, my God can take care of it. Let go of it. Give it to Him this morning. Amen. Praise the Lord. I think of the story of Mary and Martha. Martha was all cumbered about. Oh, I gotta get the house clean. I get it done. I run out of time. They're coming over. Oh, what's happening here? I gotta get this done. I gotta get that done. And Sister Mary, please help me. Let's get this work together. Two better than one. That's a good verse in the Bible, amen. And uh, 
And you know what? Jesus shows up and you know what Mary does? She leaves her to all that mess. And she goes down over to the foot of Jesus. And you know what? The Jesus, oh Martha, you're all coming about. Mary had found the one thing that's important. And you know what she found? Some peace. Woo! She, I tell you, I know what you need to rule in your life. He says, let, let, let the peace of God rule. We need to let the peace of God rule in our lives. Amen. Perhaps sometimes we've got worry. Sometimes, we're, sometimes we've got anger. You ever got mad? Huh? Oh, since you've been saved, you never get mad, do you? You know what? He wants to rule too. That anger can get in there and it can churn things up and that's all you do. I tell you, God's got something better. Let's get rid of that. Let's let God rule the peace of God in our life. Amen. Praise Amen. the Lord. Sometimes we're just critical. I mean, I know some folks are critical about this and critical about that. They can't find anything good. And it's just plain the, the, the spirit of criticalness that's ruling in land. And you know what? Praise God. There's a better spirit than that. Yeah. Amen. There's a spirit of peace that God gives us. Amen. Sometimes it's a spirit of unforgiveness. I ain't doing it. I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna do it. You know, that's not God's plan. Yeah. We have to let. It says, let the peace of God rule. Amen. Sometimes we're just, sometimes it's bitter. Sometimes maybe it's sadness. And we do have sadness, but don't let it rule you. Don't let it rule you. Maybe it's turmoil, and I just don't know. I didn't expect it to go on this week or in my life. Maybe it's just unthankful. Whatever situation you have here this morning, I want to encourage you and say, let the peace of God rule. Our problem is we have a hard time letting go. I, I wrote down a phrase. It just came to me this morning. I'm sure it's not original. But it says, let's get out, let's get out of the way and let God have his way. You know what our biggest problem is? Right here. Yeah, yeah. Right. We're in the way. Yeah. He wants to have his way. Let's just let go and let God have his way this morning. Wouldn't it be great? Yeah. We ought to be the most content, the most excited people on the planet. Right. Amen. Because I've got the peace of God. Even sometimes the river's up. Amen. Sometimes, but you know what I've got? The peace of God. Amen. Praise the Lord. We find, I've shared this here recently, you know, Peter said to cast our cares upon him. You know what the casting is? That's let go. Our problem is we're still hanging on to it. We got to realize whatever you're hanging on to, you're not going to make it better. We got to give it to the one that can. And he is able this morning to make it better. Praise the Lord. Amen. Has he ever done anything for you? Amen. Woo! Amen. You know why? Because you let him do it. Yeah. Let's let God. Let go and let God this morning. Amen. Well, we find that verse 15. Verse 16 is really the, the meat of it here. You say, well, uh, I need some help to get this peace. You know, when you got saved, you got justified, and you've got the peace of God. Amen. But you know what? The devil wants the peace. He wants to take it away from you. Yeah. He wants to fill. He wants something else to rule in your mind and in your life and in your heart. Amen. But there's a peace that he wants. And you say, well, how do I get that? Verse 16 says, let the word of Christ dwell in you. So we in verse 15, let the peace of God rule. Verse 16 says, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with a grace in your heart to the Lord. Said, let the word of Christ dwell in you. Gee, by the way, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. His word is not the problem. Amen. It's the same. Yeah. You can count on it. But it's something that we have to do we have to yield. We have to surrender. Yeah. We need to let go and let God. Amen. We find uh, let the word of Christ dwell in you. And it says teaching and admonishing one another. This is what I want to do. I want to, I want to encourage you. 
And you know what it says to do it? And buy songs, hymns, and spiritual songs. And you know, uh, as I, I look at that here, the book of Psalms really uh, is one of the most encouraging books you can read. It's got a book that's got it all. And I'm going to just give you a few things here this morning. I want to look at some verses in the Psalms. The Bible says I'm supposed to do that, by the way. We're supposed to admonish one another yes. in Psalms. So there must be something in there that will help me get the peace of God. Anybody need that peace of God? Say, I'm having a little trouble letting loose. I'm having a little problem with this. But praise God, the Word of God, it'll help you let loose. Amen. Boy, we need to cut loose, don't we? Amen. Only way we can do it, let go and let God. Amen. I take over Psalms. Amen. I, there's so many there. I, I just don't know. I might get carried away. There's so many songs. I could read the whole book. Okay? About this 150 chapters. But, uh, amen, there's, there's a lot in there. But we're not going to try not to. Amen. I look in Psalms uh, uh, chapter 8. Uh, verse 4. You know, this is an interesting lot of verses. I'm just picking some out that I like, amen. It says, What is man that thou art mindful of him? That's talking about God. Think about it. And the Son of Man that thou visitest him. <clears throat> Who am I? It says, For thou hast made him a little lower than the angels and hast crowned him with glory and honor. Thou madest him to have dominion over the works of his hand, thy hand. Thou hast put all things under his feet. Verse 9 says, O Lord, O Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth. You know what? I like that verse there. It says, What is man that thou art mindful of him? You know that tells me this morning, God, you are important to God. The schools are trying to teach our kids that we came from monkeys. They're trying to tell us we're just like one of the animals in the world. We're just, ele we're just got a higher uh, evolution uh, amongst us. No. God set you and I apart. And you and I are special to Him this morning. Amen. Isn't it good to know that? Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. I've been kind of got some of these crazy books there and that Reader's Digest I had in these big books. And there were nice colorful pictures like that. I was going to let my grandson read them, read them but I'm not going to anymore. And I started reading them in there. I was sharing Sister Laura in there and some of the things there and, and what took place and how the earth came to about, how man came about, and all the silliness that they have. It's just like a comic book. In the beginning, God. Yeah. Amen? In the beginning, God. Praise the Lord. Amen. I like that. We're, in my, we're important. In, in Psalm 19, 1, says, The heavens declare the glory of God. Good. Just look. I don't know how we need to be a scientist or anything that just get in a telescope and look out there and not believe there's a God. It's, it's, it's quite complicated. And you know what? It doesn't skip a beat. Did you know the sun came up this morning? And we know exactly when it's going to come up, when it's going to go down, where it's going to be, how what the tilt is, and all that. I have a God! Amen. Right. If you've got any doubts about God, just look. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Uh, look in Psalms 27. I want to admonish you, amen. I want to encourage you. I want to warn you, amen. It, it says, by Psalms, amen, in the book of Psalms, uh, chapter 27, verse 14. I like this. Wait on the Lord. Uh-oh. I don't want to hear that. Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage, and he shall strengthen the heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Boy, I like that, don't you? David wrote that. You know what? David's speaking by experience. And boy, he waited a long time to become king. He was crowned king as a boy. And it was like 17, I don't know how many years he waited. He had to run, hide, and cave. You know, he says, wait on the Lord. Woo! I don't think it's going to happen. Yes, it will. My God promises it. We can claim Him, amen. But we oftentimes have to wait on Him. Yeah. You know what that will do? help you give you some peace. It's His timing, not my timing. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Amen. I like that verse. Hallelujah. Oh, I like this one here. Psalms 30, verse 5. For it says the end of work. It says in the last part, Weeping may endure for a night. I'm tired of crying, aren't you? But joy cometh in the morning. <laughs> Amen. You know what? There's better days. Woo! Glory! You know what? There's hope. 
Praise the Lord. Look over in Psalms 46. Psalms 46. Verse 1. God is our refuge. You need a refuge? I've got good news. We've got one. And strength. A very present help. What? In trouble. Do you believe that? You can say, well, I don't know. Have you gone in any trouble? You'll find trouble. The Job said, man, in a few days, and full of trouble. Right. Trouble's all around us. If you're not in trouble now, watch out, it's going to be trouble. And praise God, he's a place of refuge and strength in times of trouble, amen. Therefore, will not fear, though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried in the midst of the sea. You know, that says I can count on my God. Yeah. Amen. Though the waters... Through of war and the trouble through the mountains shake with the swelling thereof. Verse 4 says, There is a river, the stream whereof shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacle of the Most High. I like verse 5. God is in the midst of her. You know what? When you're going through that situation, God's in the midst. He didn't run away. You can count on. I need him. Amen. Praise the Lord. Boy, I like those songs. Amen. Psalms 46 verse 10 says, Be still and know that I am God. Sometimes you just need to stop. You ever say, just calm down. Huh? You ever been told somebody, or maybe you've been told that? Just, I mean, good night. Just calm down. Calm down. It don't take much to get us all stirred up, does it? Yeah. Be still. He's, he's God this morning, amen. Yeah. He knows what's going on. Praise the Lord. I like that song. Don't forget it. It'll help you with the peace that passes understanding, amen. Psalm 51, 12, it says, Restore. I like this. You know what? David knew all about failing God. And you know what? I do too. And you know what sin does? It'll take the joy out of your life. Mm. And you know what David said in verse 12 of chapter 51? Restore unto me the joy of what? The joy. My salvation. Yes. I'm, talking that's, I'm talking to safe folks on that. You can't restore something you ain't got. There's a peace I want to give you. And with that peace comes a joy. Praise the Lord. In chapter 55, verse 22, it says, Cast thy burden upon the Lord. Hallelujah. This is just Psalms we're looking at. There's many verses we can pull out of the Bible. But praise God, you know what? They cling to it. They clung to it. They didn't have a New Testament. They looked in the Psalms and praise God. We find, let the word of Christ dwell, dwell in you. Oh, look over in Psalms 103. I like this. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless His holy name. You know what? This is a key here. It's not about blessing you. It's about blessing God. If we'd get back to blessing God, God will bless us. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all His benefits. Praise God. We've got something when we've got Jesus. Who forgiveth all thy iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases, who redeemeth thy life from destruction, who crowneth thee with a loving kindness and tender mercy, who satisfied thy mouth with good things, so that thy youth is renewed like an eagle. I like verse 10. He says, you know what he says? He hath not dealt with us after our sins, nor rewarded us according to our iniquities. You know what if he did? I'd be zapped. So would you. Verse 12 says, boy, this is encouraging. Don't forget this verse. As far as the east is from the west, so hath he removed our transgressions from us. Yeah. You don't have to worry about that sin anymore. It's gone. That gives me a peace, amen. Thank you, Lord. So many times I like to stir it up again and think, oh, I don't know. 
I've been good, but praise God, it's all been covered under the blood. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. In Psalms 118, verse 1, it says, His mercies endure. For a season? No. <laughs> Forever. Amen. Aren't you glad for that? Amen. Many times I feel like they ran out. Psalms 119.11 says, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. <laughs> There's power in the word of God. Yeah. Just a couple more here. Psalms 121. Oh, I like this. Oh, I can. I, I started to just give you one verse, but this is wonderful. Amen. Psalm 121. I will lift my eyes unto the hills. Amen. From whence cometh my help. Amen. Stop looking down, folks. Look up. Yeah. My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. Sounds like he can handle it, don't it? He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon the right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the noon moon by night. The Lord shall pre preserve thee. Oh, I like that. They said, let me read that again. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve, notice what it says, thy soul. Did you know that's in the book of Psalms? The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. You're looking for some peace? That peace needs a rule. You know how it rules. We need to let the word of Christ dwell in us. Amen. One, one last one, one, Psalms 126. We know this verse. This is encouraging, folks. Verse 5 says, They that sow in tears shall reap in joy. He that goeth forth and weepeth, bearing precious seed, shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him. I'm going to tell you what, praise God, there's a God that's able to do it all this morning. Amen. But you know what we got to do? We need to let go. Let God. Let's get out of the way. Let God have his way. There's a... Uh, oh, I wanted to read so many other things. I like Psalm 23. Anybody like that? Amen. Uh, I, I just shared just recently at the, again at that Annie's uh, funeral. And uh, maybe it was the graveside, I don't know where, but it's older I get, the more that's, that song means a lot to me. It's wonderful. The Lord's my shepherd. Yeah. Yeah, Anybody got a shepherd here this morning? Yeah. If you don't, I know, I want you to know there's one that wants to guide you. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. He'll lead you around those green pastures. Amen. He'll lead you through the shadow of the valley of death. It says, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Yeah. And I'm glad we don't stop there. Yeah. And then I shall dwell in the house of the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Forever. Boy, just imagine if we could hide some of this in our heart. Mm. You know what? We might keep a smile on our face. Mm. We might have a little peace when the, when the storm comes. Amen. I was going to read another psalm here, but I, we're not going to do that. Amen. I was going to, Psalms 1 is a great psalm too, but it talks, it talks about the righteous and the unrighteous. And the way of the righteous and the way of the unrighteous. Do you know what? When we go back to our text here again in, in, in Colossians chapter 3, verse 16, it says, Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. You've got to let it, folks. You might hear it, and it ain't going to dwell. Again, you've got to let the peace of God rule. We've got to let it. We've got to surrender. So let the word, verse 16, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, <laughs> teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns. You know what? We need to do that to one another. Spirits is on singing with grace in your heart. Notice what it says. I'm going to sing with grace. 
I don't know how you can sing without it. I'm glad I found grace. Yes, I mean. I mean, it's amazing grace. It's not amazing me. That's right. It's not amazing what I've done. It's amazing Him. Yeah. Amen. And it says when we sing and when we talk and we share, we're, you know what it is? We're doing it with grace Man. in the Lord. Yeah. You know what that is? That's humility. <coughs> you know what I've done? I've got me out of the way and put God in the way. All that I have is because of Him. Yeah. All that whatever I will have or don't have, whatever I go through, is because of Him. Yes. You know, it's why I want to encourage you to let go. We've got to let go of this flesh. We've got to get to let go of this, this self. We've got to let go of whatever is ruling in our mind that's not healthy. And let God have His way. By the way, he's got enough peace to handle it all. That's right. He's got enough power. Mm. Trust and obey. There's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. The very first word in the book of Psalms is blessed. That means happy. God has given us what we need to get through this journey. It ain't long. We can see the shore and bite inside, can't we? But my God's got something better for our lives. Blessed, amen. Let's all stand. Father, we thank you. Thank you for your precious word of God. Lord, I get a simple message this morning. We just need to let go. We need to give it to you. Give it to Jesus. Give it all and let you have your way. Lord, if we're honest, we, we hang on to things. Lord, it affects us. It affects our, our disposition. It affects our joy. It affects our step. It affects our relationships. Oh, Lord, help us this morning just let go. Help us get self out of the way. Lord, we need your help to do it. We need that power that comes from above. We, we think to ourselves, I can't do it. No, we can't. But we have a God that can. Have your way, Lord. We just rejoice in Jesus' precious name. Amen. With every head bowed and every eye closed this morning. What are you hanging on to? I want to encourage you this morning to let go. Let God have his way. You got to worry. You know what the Lord would say? Let not your heart be troubled. Give it to Him. Leave it at the foot of the cross. He'll take care of it. Let it go. And let God this morning. better than his way. What a journey. How wonderful. Oh, how many times I've gotten in the way. His mercy endureth forever. He says, let's try again. Let's go again. are on you.
how to weigh this message here this morning. Lord, we let you have control of our lives. Lord, don't let the things of this world determine what we do and how we act. Lord, we ask, Lord, that you give strength and courage to cling to that word. Help us to be obedient to it, Lord, what you tell us to do. Help us to do those things, Lord. Father, we ask this morning that you help those that's going to sick and quick. Nursing homes, hospitals, and those that are all families. We ask that you touch them, encourage and strengthen them, Lord. Father, we ask that you come to those, Lord, that they have just taken one of them from the Lord. We ask that you help them in the moments of grief, long, long, sad nights. We ask, Lord, that you help them, help them through these things. Lord, we need to understand, Lord, that nothing's too big. Nothing's too small, Lord, but what you can't take care of. All we have to do, Lord, is cast it on you, Lord. You say you, you care for us and you love us, Lord. We ask you to help us to lean on those precious words, Lord, and that precious book that you left for us. Those precious writers, Lord, that let those things for us. We thank you for them. We thank you for everyone that we have here today, Lord, that we can lean on and help us through this life's journey. Father, we ask now that you go with us to our home, watch over us, lead, guide, and pray. And we cast our tears upon you here this morning, Father. We come to you asking, trusting, and believing in that precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. 